Hi, welcome. It's Mary Ellen McGonigal, and I am happy you could join me today. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing fundamental uh, information and metrics that uh, really can help put you in front of stocks on the move, and uh, and I look forward to sharing that with you. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. I'll start with providing you with a brief background uh, as far as who I am. Again, Mary Ellen McGonigal. And, uh, you know, growing up I really was not very familiar with Wall Street, uh, the stock market. I knew it was out there, but it was not uh, part of my world, so to speak. I did always have a love of numbers and finance. Uh, and out of college, I moved to New York City, and uh, in a stroke of luck, I met someone that was able to help me secure a position on the trading floor at Goldman Sachs. And I definitely was low man on the totem pole, but it was really, really quite exciting. Uh, this was during the go-go years of the 80s, lots of money being moved, and uh, I knew I had found my home. A uh, very, very exciting time. and I was there for a, a little bit, but I did move on to go to what's called the buy side, and I joined uh, a large institutional insurance firm in their fixed income department, and uh, I was started there as an assistant portfolio manager, and I really got to learn the ropes as to how the markets worked. Uh, I did eventually work my way up there to uh, manage over two billion in assets and again very very exciting and it was during that time that I noticed that uh, if you were running a large sum of money uh, generally you had access to information uh, certainly before the general public and in, nothing in an illegal fashion it was just the period there was not the internet uh, there was not the ability to share that information, um, but of course, as, there, as you know, the SEC stepped in and pretty much leveled the playing field so that now, as an individual investor, you can get access to that same information as these big institutions. And I think, certainly as it relates to fundamental information, uh, this is huge. It's critical, and it really makes it a very, very, I think, exciting time to uh, be able to manage and invest your own money because you can get this information uh, in a timely fashion. And so uh, I stayed, I was uh, managing money for quite some time, but I did then move out to the West Coast with my then new husband. And another exciting opportunity, I uh, joined William O'Neill and Company here out in Los Angeles. And uh, he, uh, that particular firm, as you know, they produce and publish investors business daily. Uh, I was with what was called the institutional marketing division. So I traveled the globe. I met uh, regularly with top portfolio managers and analysts. And uh, in addition to teaching them the O'Neill methodology, I also uh, played a hand in advising them on uh, stock selection and uh, also the broader markets. And that was also a very, very exciting period. I was there for 15 years. And uh, more recently, I've started my own investment research firm, MEM investment research, and I do still work with a number of institutions, but more recently, uh, over the past year, I've broadened that out to work with self-directed and individual investors, and for me, that's added a whole new dimension to my work, and I'm really, uh, I'm enjoying the ability to share uh, my over 25 years of experience. So, uh, in addition to that, I do also uh, write and publish for uh, StockCharts.com. I'm one of their top advisor at their top advisors corner. Uh, I have I write for TheStreet.com, uh, and then also now with my current research firm, we put out a weekly and a midweek report that uh, provides guidance on the broader markets as well as. Uh, providing individual stock ideas. So that's a bit about me. Let's go ahead and move on. This is a disclaimer. I will not read the entire thing, but just know that the presentation 
today is strictly for educational purposes only, so I won't be recommending any buy or sell uh, ideas. So let's go ahead and we can begin, uh, I'll give you an overview of what we'll be covering today. As mentioned, it's fundamental information and the first thing that we'll we'll go over is why exactly is fundamental, uh, knowing those fundamental metrics, why is that important? And we'll review that. And then we will also dig into which metrics you should pay attention to. And I did want to remind you that, again, this is all based on many, many years of experience and studying former winning stocks, the characteristics those stocks had in common, and a lot of it does start with the fundamentals. Uh, third, we'll review what types of companies tend to have stronger fundamental, and it's going to be relating to the metrics that I've, uh, that through research, has shown is important, so we'll review what types of companies tend to stand out. And then using history to give you confidence, and by that I mean that we will be reviewing a number of examples. And uh, this is currently great for this presentation, but also in your own work, I urge you to go back, uh, look at charts, and see, uh, you'll get a really good feel for what has worked, and then based on that, it will help uh, build your confidence so that you can become a better trader. And then lastly, I'm urging you to stick around to the end. We will have a special offer at the end of the presentation, so uh, we can review that at the very end. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, wh what I've done is identified four key fundamental indicators that are critical for you to pay attention to. And there are a couple of, uh, in reviewing these, important things to note. What, what, uh, while there are any number of balance sheet and cash flow line items that one can dig into, uh, what I've done is narrowed it down to these four readily accessible metrics and really not just to simplify it, but more importantly, these metrics have been found to be very, very uh, critical. However, before we dig into that, uh, I did want to get a little bit into why knowing the fundamental information about a company is critical. I know a lot of my work does revolve around technical, using uh, technical analysis. Uh, however, I will tell you that my best and most top performing clients while I was with O'Neill were those that could marry the fundamentals with the technicals. And if you can master that, you really are going to be on track to outpace the broader markets. And so now why is fundamental information uh, critical? Well, I will tell you that, uh, again, when looking at the broader markets and really examining what moves a stock, uh, in past webinars you've heard me mention that it is volume, and this volume is coming from institutions, institutional money, uh, their footprints are all over the markets, and I'm um, talking about mutual funds and hedge funds and uh, managers that run hundreds of millions, even billions of dollars. And so these institutional money managers are mandated to invest, for the most part, in uh, stocks that are high quality. They have a lot of eyes uh, looking at their portfolio. They have compliance. So as institutions, uh, and then they also have large teams of research analysts, and these analysts are digging in, making sure that the potential addition to a given portfolio is a company that is healthy, it's on track to grow. So what I am trying to say here is that because this fundamental strength is so critical before an institution purchases it, uh, I'm suggesting that that's why you as well need to pay attention because, again, these large institutions are the guys that really are moving these stocks. And uh, so that's one primary reason that you, you want to make sure uh, that the fundamentals 
of a given stock that you're reviewing is important. The other reason is based on studies. Uh, many of you may be familiar with O'Neill's work, uh, but even outside of his work, there are these key fundamental metrics that you need to uh, be aware of so that when you are looking into a particular stock, whether you're going to invest it in it or not, you want to make sure that these uh, metrics are strong and pointing you toward uh, a fundamentally healthy stock. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first key fundamental indicator is earnings. And uh, you may have heard me, this is something I will repeat again and again. Uh, the number one primary driver of a stock's price is their earnings. And uh, I will say again, from studying prior winning stocks, the uh, strongest price period of a price advance in a winning stock correlates directly with that period of earnings growth. And so when looking at earnings, I mentioned here current, past, and future. Ideally, you do want the particular company to have a history of earnings in place. But let's talk about current earnings. And uh, what I would like to point out is when you're looking at the current earnings per share of a particular company, and we will be getting into a number of examples, what you want to focus on is that earnings percent change. So when, uh, particularly right now, we are in uh, the heat of the earnings season, and companies are now reporting their third quarter for 2016. And what you want to pay attention to with that is not just the earnings, how much they've earned, but also how good is that current earnings earnings versus this very same quarter a year ago. So you want to look at the percent increase or decrease, but for winning stocks, the percent increase of that current quarter versus that same quarter a year ago. And then when looking at future earnings, of course here we need to rely on analysts that cover a given company and you want to pay attention to what their estimates are for that earnings growth going forward. And oftentimes now, as stated, you as an individual investor, you can listen in to the CEO and CFO's earnings call and uh, oftentimes now th these uh, the management is giving guidance for going forward as well. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. So when paying attention to and looking at earnings, uh, generally you need to see on average at least a 20% year over year improvement. Again, on that most recent. Now, of course, the higher the earnings percent change, the faster that company is growing, and hence the higher and faster uh, the stock will go up. And that again is uh, has been defined again and again, uh, and it's it's uh, been proven again and again. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. The second item is revenues. Of course, this is sales, and uh, this also, of course, is repeat. Uh, re it is uh, shown on a quarterly basis. And a couple of things with sales. What you'll see, and we will see this in examples, oftentimes, particularly for IPOs, uh, smaller, newer companies, they will begin reporting sales while earnings remain negative. And what you'll see is that revenues drive earnings. Earnings. So if you have a particular company that you're looking at and that you're following, if they are starting to come in and produce earnings, uh, I would keep them on your watch list. Eventually that earnings will translate, I'm sorry, that revenue will translate into earnings and that when that does occur, that's when oftentimes a stock will start to take off and uh, start having a price improvement. Uh, the third item here is cash flow and uh, a couple of things here. A uh, company's cash flow is broken down into three types. There's cash flow from operations, cash flow from 
investing activities as well as cash flow from financing activities. The one that you want to pay attention to is the cash flow from operations. And this is a number that's telling you how much money a particular company has on hand. And it, it tracks money flowing into and out of the company from its normal operations. And as a definition, it's generally uh, defined as what a cash flow figure is taken uh, from the revenue. And then you subtract the operating expenses, such as uh, wages and uh, utilities, other expenses. You subtract that from the revenue. And that provides you with this operating cash flow. And as you can imagine, uh, the stronger and the higher the cash flow of a particular company, the better. Uh, this is telling you that the company has a cushion in the event of an economic downturn or a company uh, falters, they have this cash flow. Uh, we've seen this with a number of the energy companies now uh, where they had a two-year drought with severely uh, decreased oil prices. And the, one, the companies that are emerging now are those that did have a healthy cash flow going into that downtrend. And those are the companies that are able to sustain and now come back now that oil prices uh, are back up. So with the cash flow, it is recorded quarterly. You can uh, pay attention to that. Generally, it's annual increases that you want to see. And again, it signals that the company is managing their cash well, and uh, it's, it is a, a very good sign. So we will get into cash flow with some of our examples. And uh, the fourth and last key fundamental uh, economic, sorry, fundamental indicator is uh, the profit margin. And basically, uh, the profit margin is taken, you calculate it by net income divided by revenues. So basically, what this number is telling you is how much out of every dollar a particular company makes in sales, how much of the, that revenue is the company able to keep. So as such, uh, the profit margins, that is a metric that will change industry to industry. So as a, for instance, a uh, computer software company where their major expense will be upfront in building that software, uh, and then their expense going forward is not going to be quite as high outside of staff, uh, they, that type of company will generally have a higher profit margin and as compared to uh, retailers. Retailers do tend to have thinner profit margins. They have a lot in the way of expenses. They need to purchase the products. Oftentimes they'll have rent that they need to pay. So when you're looking at profit margin, you want to uh, not compare that to all companies, but more compare the profit margins of a particular company to its peers, and that's where uh, this particular, uh, you know, as I said, it varies from industry to industry, so you'll want to uh, take a look at that number in comparison to uh, others in that same field. So those, these are the four key fundamental indicators. I have placed them here in order of importance. And again, I cannot stress enough, uh, and you'll see with our many examples, how critical that uh, earnings number is as a driver. So how about some other fundamental information? We can review other items that are, are out there, but not as critical. Uh, the first one, and of course this might be critical to some of you as investors, but what I'm referencing is how important this metric is in determining uh, how high a stock can go. And the first one is price to earnings. It's called the P-E ratio, and you're taking the price of the stock and dividing it by that earnings. And for purposes of what we're reviewing today, uh, I'm talking about very high growth companies. Uh, and so as such, I uh, did want to point out 
uh, this has been proven in studies, that a higher PE is not something to be afraid of. Your higher growth companies will command a higher PE. It is just the nature of the markets because as they are high growers, again, the demand is higher. So it will drive the uh, price well above uh, its earnings. So oftentimes your higher growth will have, uh, in some cases, well over uh, a PE well over 100, as opposed to your uh, more stable, slower growers, uh, McDonald's and Hershey's and those, uh, they tend to bounce around that 20 times earnings. But for the bigger winners, uh, PE is not going to be uh, critical as far as if it's high, I would urge you to not uh, be steered away. And then what about the economy? Uh, I'm pointing this out because, of course, no matter uh, if you find the fastest growing company out there with the strongest fundamentals, you, of course, want to make sure that you have uh, the backdrop of a strong economy and therefore a strong market behind you. And that's uh, always critical. You want the proverbial wind behind your sales. And now, of course, global economic growth is a key component. It's certainly key with our work here at MEM Investment Research. We are always paying attention to growth, uh, be it in China, uh, the emerging markets. All of this is going to impact uh, whether you get into a particular sector or into a particular stock, if it's going to be impacted by uh, global economic growth. And then lastly, using technical analysis, and I did touch on that in the sense that uh, once you find a fundamentally sound company, you will want to overlay the technical analysis so that you can really pinpoint your buy and sell uh, area. Because, uh, and this is what I Again, with our work, uh, we start out needing to see, we screen for high quality, fundamentally sound stocks, and then it's from there that we take that next step and overlay the technicals on it so that uh, we can determine whether the stock is in an uptrend or a downtrend and uh, whether it's coming out of a base and so forth. But again, the fundamentals are going to be the first key step. Uh, prior to overlaying that technical analysis. So let's go ahead and we can start digging into some examples. And uh, this first one is Intuitive Surgical, ISRG. And what we are viewing here is a monthly chart. So each bar of activity here is actually one month. And the reason I did that was so that we could, I could show you going back uh, over 10 years. And this is one of many, many companies where you'll see this very, very similar phenomenon. The company prior to 2004 was very much in a, a development phase. And they were developing what went on to become uh, robotic surgical devices. but. Prior to 2004, the company was not uh, making earnings. They did have sales, but the earnings were not coming through. And it was not until the end of 2004 and that first quarter of 2005 that the company came in with earnings. And it was their very first quarter of positive earnings. And quite clearly, you can see the markets responding uh, very positively. This is actually another strong earnings report, so another leg up. So let's take a look at the beginning of 2016, and ISRG was getting into uh, lawsuits, and, and they were spending a lot on R&D. So it was a period when their earnings did falter. And hopefully you can see quite clearly their negative earnings report coming in below estimates, the stock falters. And then uh, moving further along, these bigger up moves, they had a huge quarterly earnings report in 07. Uh, this, of course, is the 08 
2009 uh, collapse in the broader markets, but they were able to resume that uptrend from that quarterly. So hopefully you're able to see really how impactful earnings can be. Uh, this 2013, this is a period where the revenues started to decline and uh, the earnings were still coming in, but the revenues were, were not growing quite as much. Uh, as you can see, subsequently there was an impact on earnings. Their next two quarters were negative and uh, the stock underperformed. Uh, the earnings did start to pick up again in that 2015 and you can see where the stock price responded. So that's taking a look at earnings as well as sales, being the driver both on the plus side and the negative side. Uh, here's a look, uh, this is Amazon and again, uh, well in this case we're looking at a weekly chart of Amazon taking you back to the mid 2012 period and of course this stock has been a huge winner recently. Uh, it's been on our suggested holdings list for quite some time but let's take a look at that uh, 2014 and this was a period where the company was coming in with negative earnings. They were put, pouring a lot of money into technological advances and uh, their earnings were faltering. Uh, the other thing that you'll see come into play is during a period such as 2013 when the company was growing their earnings, oftentimes what will happen is a company uh, will have periods of tough comparisons. So they may be coming in with earnings, but because the earnings growth was so high prior, uh, it's difficult to beat. So hopefully that makes sense and we'll be showing some examples. But this is a period of negative earnings. And then uh, beginning of 2015, and as many of you know, that was a great year for this particular stock. They started to come back in with strong quarterly earnings and sales. So sure enough, you can see the big, uh, huge uptrend as the markets responded. And uh, after the beginning of this year, of course, was a very tough time for the markets, but uh, once the markets recovered, Amazon has indeed come back very, very strongly. And during this particular, this year, they've had had earnings uh, triple digit, which is amazing for a company of this size to be posting earnings increases uh, well over 100%. And then they also uh, this year have been reporting revenues that have ranged from uh, anywhere from 22 to 31%. Now again, just to remind you, we're looking at each current quarter versus that exact same quarter a year ago. So let's take a look. Uh, this is Alibaba, and I'm, we're looking here at a weekly chart. And uh, what I wanted to point out to you here is, again, uh, directly below is their reported earnings per share percent, as well as their revenue percent change versus that prior quarter. And this is, arrow is indicating when they report it and uh, I'm sure you're getting the point by now just how important this high uh, earnings and sales is as a driver. Now, of course, this is the beginning of this year, that tough period, but take a look here. Uh, their first quarter, 2016, the company came in with earnings that were 4% less than their first quarter of 2015, and quite clearly you can see the markets lose interest in the stock. If you owned it, you could have held on to it, but gen you're, you're not making any progress. But here more recently, uh, they came back in. Huge revenues, 48%, same quarter uh, last year improvement, and the stock, of course, had a, a wonderful uh, uptick and response to that strong earnings and sales. Now, here I briefly touched on that there are certain types of companies that are going to report stronger earnings and sales. And uh, this is an example. In particular, what uh, the real sweet spot for these high growth stocks tends to be 
uh, smaller capital market capitalized stocks, smaller cap stocks. Uh, so, so in as a for instance, we're looking at uh, Gigamon, and this is a weekly chart. And uh, this particular company currently is five billion, but when they first started uh, in their move, the the company was under two billion, and that's. There are certainly smaller, we will review other ones, but the point here is that as a smaller company, you will have a, a smaller amount in earnings that you are comparing yourself to, so that it's very easy to come in with triple digit growth versus uh, a year ago. So as a, for instance, if you were to look at uh, McDonald's and uh, most recently, McDonald's uh, recorded five billion in earn in. Uh, oh my goodness, five! I have to check my notes. But um, the bigger point is that's a huge number. So even if the company were to improve by five hundred million, uh, that would only be a ten percent improvement so uh, as opposed to these smaller companies that are coming in with a hundred uh, million they improve to 150 million well that's a 50% improvement so uh, that's huge so in this particular example Gigamon uh, again this is a company that they came in with 450% improvement uh, this is their third quarter of 2015 and the revenues were 48 uh, percent. The company really fared okay given the broader markets in the beginning of 2016, but as uh, they reported their fourth quarter of 2015, again strong earnings and revenue improvement and of course you can see how this particular stock uh, has responded to that. Again another small one, uh, this is Momo. And uh, in this particular instance, their most recent uh, quarterly report was actually 500% versus that same quarter a year ago. And again, these smaller companies are going to be able to uh, report these big in increases. Momo, as a for instance, uh, they reported six cents per share. And that same quarter a year ago, they had only earned one cent per share. So you can see how, uh, you know, going from one cent to six cents, uh, as an example, McDonald's is posting a dollar sixty-seven per share, much bigger numbers, but also much tougher to improve upon. Uh, so hopefully I was able to make that point that you're smaller companies and that's why you want to pay attention and have a watch list of IPOs and smaller companies because they are high growers. They will tend to move faster. So um, let's take a look. I've been focusing on earnings and sales, but uh, here what we are looking at, and this is coming to you from Google Financial. And uh, on the left side, the blue bar is showing you the quarterly revenue. So you can visually see an improvement uh, in uh, revenue. And this, of course, is Facebook. Uh, and then also pay attention to, we talked about the profit margin earlier. And this is very definitely the type of trend that you want to look for, where the profit margins are improving. Uh, this is, again, quarterly. Uh, Google also has the ability to show this to you annually, but uh, quarterly can be very uh, quite a bit more useful as far as providing you with more current information. Now, on the right side, what we are looking at here is the cash flow information, and I pointed out to you that operating cash flow is what you want to pay attention to. And uh, while the company did have a dip at the end of uh, 2015, they've resumed that uptrend and you can see a very, very generally strong uh, financial metrics in place, both revenue, profit margin, and cash flow. And of course, uh, here is a weekly chart of Facebook during that same period that we were just looking at with the cash flow 
and the earnings, I'm sorry, the revenues and so forth. And of course you can see that Facebook has been a very, very, uh, it's been quite positive and a big winner. Uh, the next example is the opposite. And what we uh, are looking at here, I should have uh, highlighted it, but this uh, is for J.C. JCPenney, uh, the retail department store. And what I'd like to point out here is during the same period, the company is reporting pretty good revenues. Uh, however, if you look, even I mentioned that retail does have thin profit margins, but this is even thinner than normal. Really, really poor profit margins. The company is not able to retain income from these high revenues, so that's not a positive. And then also their operating cash flow. Now they did have this blip here. Uh, as a retailer, this particular company does tend to report a strong fourth quarter. A lot of that is holiday related, but sure enough, uh, the operating cash flow resumed its downtrend once that was reported. And so now let's take a look. Uh, this is not a pretty chart, but we are looking at JCPenney. This is in response, I mentioned that holiday season, they do tend to put in a good uh, Q4 result, but uh, overall you can see your general trend has been down in response to uh, weak fundamentals. And uh, I talked earlier about IPOs and having them on your watch list, on your radar. Uh, this, of course, is a now very famous company, Tesla, but they too were unknown at one point when they did first become public. So we're looking here again at a monthly, and I'm taking you back uh, to the 2012 period. And what we had happening with this particular uh, period in, in uh, and also 2013 and 2014, the company at that time did have positive cash flow. So that was one metric that was picking up. The other was during this period, revenues were increasing and actually uh, we saw a almost 700% increase in revenue. Now, of course, at the time the company was small, so that 700% increase was actually growth from, uh, they went from 45 million in sales to 305. So again, a small company, uh, they have a small 45 million in sales and they're able to post huge improvement. So moving forward, uh, the company reported, and, and during this period, the stock is just meandering, it's not doing much. But again, it wasn't until they came in with that first big quarter of positive earnings and that's what sparked the market's interest and the stock went on to have uh, an advance over a 15 month period but now more recently uh, the company and this is taking us into 2015 and 16 they are of course pouring uh, much of their money into R&D they are not reporting positive earnings, so uh, the stock's performance has faltered. And uh, you'll see the same with the decrease in their cash flow. So all of that is going to impact how a stock performs. And uh, so let's take a look at another. Now this is uh, Broadcom. And we are looking at a monthly. And what I wanted to point out to you with this particular stock is uh, take a look at that 2014 period. And it is during this period that uh, this particular company had cash flow that was almost doubled their 2013 cash flow. And Likewise, in uh, 2015, they came in with cash flow that was 75% greater uh, than the prior year. So during this uptick, we're seeing a uh, huge continuation in very, very strong cash flow. It was uh, really quite uh, tremendous to watch. Now, of course, during this period, they were also coming in with strong earnings, which of course was another driver. But, uh, but certainly their big cash flow was, was being looked at and paid attention to. So uh, 
we've reviewed some examples. Uh, now let's go ahead and take a look at how you can screen for these fundamental metrics that we've gone over. Now the first is I mentioned EPS growth and you do want it to be at least 20%, 25% or more would be even more ideal. And what you're going to be doing again is screening for year over year quarterly improvement. And you also want to pay attention to the EPS growth estimates. And you want to see equally strong estimates for the current year as well as the next year. So that's going to be your first screen. Uh, the second, we talked about revenue growth. And again, you want to see at least 20%. And this is something that many uh, platforms you can screen for. Uh, and then cash flow. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this to you earlier, but you do want to see cash flow uh, that's 20% better than their earnings. That's the general, uh, for screening purposes, what you want to see. Uh, visually, using something similar to Google Finance, you want to visually see an uptrend in that cash flow as well. So that's um, the way that you can screen for that. And then uh, profit margins. You want, of course, to look for profit margins that are high for their particular industry and then you also want to screen for profit margins that are improving. So uh, these are the four again key metrics and the ways that you can screen for that. So uh, conclusions, I've reiterated this several times but you really do want to seek fundamental strength initially when screening for stocks and then of course from there you can overlay the technicals, but that fundamental strength in a company needs to be a foundation. Uh, and of course from there, as I mentioned, overlay that technical analysis so that you can really time when to get in or out of a stock. A lot of, I do have a lot of other webinars that dig into uh, technical analysis. And then this last item, know yourself if you're devoted do that screening that we talked about. It's going to help you uncover strong stocks. Uh, if you don't have a lot of time, um, suggesting that you subscribe to a newsletter. And in our case, we do all of this screening for you. Uh, we are proud of putting uh, high quality uh, performing stocks in front of uh, our clients each week. And uh, here's that special offer I mentioned if you stayed I would uh, review this with you and uh, what we are looking at today is a uh, tutorial audio book that is going to put you uh, in front of the six key characteristics of a winning stock. And so by winning stock, I mean uh, stock at least 100%, in many cases over 1,000%. Uh, this particular uh, item is, is littered with examples and it's showing these big winning stocks going back over the years and it also uh, tells you what the one ingredient is that every winning stock needs and normally this is offered at close to 300 um, but today if you are interested you can uh, for $39 there is a link here at the bottom that you can access and uh, uh, urge you to, to uh, take advantage of this. This is not an offer that comes out uh, all the time. And I did forget to mention as far as questions, uh, I am, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that those of you might have. I apologize for not mentioning that sooner. Uh, so let's take a look at some of these questions. Uh, will this be emailed out? Yes, you will receive an email uh, of this recording. And um, cash flow from operations, uh, someone was asking on uh, Finviz. I do look at Finviz. I'm not sure if they provide that cash flow metric. There are other services uh, out there. Um, 
I believe Market Smith is one. Uh, there certainly are other services out there that will give you that uh, uh, that cash flow information, profit margin, and um, Someone else is asking what a good website is to get that quarterly, and I think I pointed that out. That's going to be Google Finance. Uh, that is a free service, and uh, I, it, it's, I was thrilled to see that. And actually, while we're on it, uh, I did notice that Yahoo had the information as well, and they have an even more interesting to me metric, but I was not able to... Uh, copy it for today's presentation, but they actually have a metric if you go into a company, look at earnings, they will show you where a company reported and then they will show a bubble that indicates whether the company came in above or below estimates. And of course, companies that come in above estimates are handsomely rewarded uh, and I thought that was uh, great to see on a service that you don't uh, have to pay for. So that's yahoo.com. Um, and I'm trying to see some of these. What fundamental metrics do you use to uh, determine debt levels? That was from Ray. Uh, actually, uh, debt is something that's uh, very straight forward that you can get in some cases. Uh, it's not the first go-to item for me uh, when examining com uh, companies, but uh, it certainly is. Um, and the, no, this particular uh, course that we're reviewing today is not the one on momentum stocks. It's not exactly the same. There is a little bit of crossover, but uh, this particular offer today gets quite a bit more into detail and provides you with a lot of, uh, as I said, examples. And I don't see any other questions, but I do uh, want to thank you for uh, participating today and for taking the time. Uh, Ash, I think you were saying uh, your question was research showing which stocks will do better in six months. Well, uh, it, I, I think I, uh, the markets certainly are cyclical as far as which stocks perform well during which periods of the economic cycle. And we do, of course, take that into consideration. Uh, our stocks picks in addition to being uh, focused on near term, we do look uh, out over the horizon longer term as well. So I hope that helps. And thank you again. Uh, I look forward to seeing many of you in some of our future webinars.